I've been asked to repair this bulkhead using um, an economical method. Um, yes, it will repair. Um, and I'm just trying to think of the best way to do it economically. This bit, where are you now? Ah, this bit here. Well, I'm just going to use one millimeter thick steel on here. That's not too bad. That's. Uh, I always use this stuff satin galvanised and believe it or not this is the only piece of steel I've got left in the whole shop. So it means going down to get some more sheet steel. That's where that lives. Now this bit here is posing a bit of a problem. Do I make work for myself by tidying all this lot up or just leave it? Because I'm thinking Look, there's the two screw holes where the uh, the strap goes on to there, you know, like the, the check strap. And it's relatively straight, no point to doing it again. So what I'm thinking of is actually finding the bracket and welding the bracket straight on, like I did with my truck. These aren't the brackets like the, um, how do we say, like the 200 TDIs and the 300 TDIs, where they had an additional bolt under here. <laughs> Ironically, they've got the bolt in, but there's no strap. So the 300 TDI's, the, the actual slider was along here, the 200 and 300 TDI's were along here with the strap going along, along here, you're probably familiar with that. But on these with the split doors, the strap pivot was here and the slide piece was on the inside of the door, so it's the opposite way around and too difficult to modernise. So I think what we'll do is that. Now, as regard the door pillar, well I've had a look at it and as the guy who's doing the painting is a Bondo and paint man, that means uh, filler and paint, it's solid, I'm going to leave that to him. But what I am going to do, is I'm going to cut down here, both sides, I'm going to try and tease that bend out, and then I'm going to replace this lip. Because it's already three thicknesses of steel, whereas here it's only two if you see what I mean, there's, there's the door pillar and the uh, footwell but here there's three thicknesses, now if I start sort of welding bits on there it's going to get really thick and as you guys know you'll never get the door seal on there because it's a bugger to get on in the first place so I intend to cut this and make it out of some thinner steel and then buff it, weld it and that should be done easy now next thing the footwell looks perfect inside and it is quite solid so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut here, cut across there, and then cut down here and around this bit here, leaving the lip on these bits and making a drop-in piece which will have the same holes and that's that done. But I'm going to make that out of 1.3mm um, and that should work, that should work, that should work fine. Um, and then it'll be sort of good to go back down the blasters and work it out. Like I say, um, I've got this bracket to move, and people look at it and say, well, it's only got a little bit of shitty weld on there, that's <laughs> no problem. It's spot welded on as well, which makes it, by the time you get this bracket off, they've spot welded it all over the place, it's tricky. So I'm going to make a new one, and I'm going to put it on here. Just make a little uh, a drop down bracket here and put it on. The dimensions are the same, so we measure it from here, whoop, where have we gone, you're over here, so I'm going to measure it from here to here and that will replicate from there to somewhere around here. Like I say, I put it on the stand, this is actually my painting stand, it's not my jig for welding, because I gave up welding these years ago because they were kind of cheap to buy and it wasn't really worth me doing, but this is my paint jig, so it's it's not very good for putting footwells in, and uh, footwells. It's not very good for putting door pillars in, but it's good to do like shonky repairs like this. So um, looks like a trip down to the uh, sheet steel place to buy. We have to buy an eight foot by four foot sheet of steel just to do this. Um, it's a pity, really, but um, that's the minimum size they'll sell. They won't sell half sheets anymore. So, we kind of stuck, aren't we? Let's go and get some steel. 
So I went downtown and just got back and uh, I got some 1.3mm uh, and 1mm thick satin galvanised but it was on a, like I said 8 by 4 sheet I don't know what that is in metric but it's big so I had to cut it in half like this to manageable sized pieces so the 1.3mm is going to be the footwell and maybe the hinge pieces I'm not sure and also the top bits because I've got to do a bit of bending on those now probably you can see here I've spent a little bit of time making templates because no doubt in Land Rover Land I might just use these again. Now how I made them was quite simple. I use this uh, artist's card. It's really good. It's a lot better than paper, but a lot thinner than cardboard. So you can measure it, make you know you can work with it, and two sheets for a dollar, cheap as chips, so you can afford to make mistakes. Pay attention. This is for the right hand side. Right hand side looking towards the bonnet. You can notice here there is a little special kick that comes out on the floor. It isn't exactly. It's, it, there's a bend here but not here if you understand. So this is where the footwell comes down. It confuses a lot of people and they make a mess. Now this is the exact same size as the footwell and you notice because it's paper I've got the uh, <coughs> holes in here for where the support is and also here where the little square holes is. Now my punch is, oh I don't know what size it is, it's that size, but it's big enough so I can just get a little square file and file those uh, bits of metal nice and square to put those little uh, plastic inserts in back in so that's not too bad. Might even use a Dremel, you never know. Depends how the weather is. Any tips for doing this? <coughs> Sharp knife flat surface, really important, so use your piece of metal that you're going to be working on rather than working on your doorstep or stuff like we used to do when we were lads. Um, nice straight edge. Um, this is the one I use all the time, it's a carpenter square but it seems to be nice for doing big squares. Pair of scissors, tape measure. Now, one thing I was going to show you on a pencil. Don't use a sharpie, use a pencil because you can get a nice straight fine line where you want to cut. It's, sharpies are a bit too broad, well not unless you use a very fine point, but I, te I tend to use it marking out everything in, in, uh, in pencil. Now, using your sharp knife is really easy, I don't need to tell you how to do that, but what about if you want to bend cardboard, you know, you like that aren't you? So if you want to put a nice bend in this, use the back of your knife, use this bit, right? So say for example, <coughs> we want to put a, can you see that? Say for example we want to put a bend on here, use the back of your knife, score it, take it up, and then nice square bend. Right? So if you use that technique you can perform miracles and nobody will ever know. So the next step, I don't know if we can pull this up without moving the camera, probably have to move this bit. I've got no room in here I tell you. So the next thing, I made these inserts uh, where's the left? Uh, here. <coughs> When you buy these uh, homemade, well these factory made ones, made, I don't know, they just stamp them out wholesale. They seem to miss that this, this piece is round in this bottom corner. You see this piece here, it's rounded. It isn't square. Well you see, I'm going to cut down this seam here. Let me get, me, get my sharpie out. Oh. So I'm going to cut here, here, and across here. Somehow, if you see what I mean. And then <clears throat> I've got nice metal to weld on to. Now, some of the foot welds that come already come with the end plate on the kick plate, and you sort of drop them in. 
if you can get away with it, don't do that. You know, and the reason is that when you put start putting double thicknesses of steel on, water and condensation will get into it. So I'm going to cut those there and around here, and it should fit like a glove. You shouldn't be able to tell any difference. It will be a little bit tiny bit higher, but it'll be uh, it'll be quite good. And then what I'll do with the pieces of metal that I've cut, I'll, I'll punch in some spot weld holes all the way around the circumference and just spot weld it. And then when we put some seam sealer on, you will never tell the difference. Uh, <clears throat> yes, the um, the uh, aftermarket uh, pre-made, I don't know, inserts, they're all right if you're in a desperate hurry or something like that, but I don't know. I, I, didn't, I didn't like them all that much. In fact, what I do when I used to get them, or customers, customers used to bring me them, I used to just to cut them down. Because it's very rare that you actually use this top piece here. It's very, very rare. This is out of a right-hand drive. But it's, I kept this for the template of the holes that go into the other side. So this is a great little template to use to mark out for the pedal. But as you can see, if you can see, even that's not the same as that. Trial and error, eh? So what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to finish off these bottom pieces uh, this afternoon. It's lunchtime now, so you know, you know, so I've been messing about this all bloody morning. So after lunch, I'll cut these out with the plasma uh, and cut the other pieces out while the plasma's set up. So. With the plasma I'll only need a straight edge because there's no fancy rounds in it or anything like that. And I was thinking about making some steel templates, but quite frankly paper ones are just as good. Um, yeah, but it's just a shame that nobody's come up with the idea of making a, an insert to go here, like the full corner, because this is where they rot out. Like, just, just cut it off here. Cup. Put another one in. Easy. And then just weld round it. But they don't. They sell those shonky pieces that go on the front. Well, they're not really worth fitting, to be honest. If it's gone that bad at the front, well, forget it. In my opinion. But they don't do anything for the back, so we have got to fabricate that. So that'll be something to look forward to. Well, I thought we uh, might as well leave this camera rolling and I'll cut out these panels. Just marked them out off my template. I'll show you how quick it is to cut them with the plasma. <laughs> There's not much room in here with all this stuff people have. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's grounded. Me moving a little bit in and out of space.
Right, so that's them cut. <coughs> the plasma tip's getting a bit knackered. Needs another one, but as you can see here, but well, not bothered. Right, that's that. That out of the way. Now, oh. <coughs> yeah, it tends to uh, when it cuts it. It doesn't cut straight, it cuts a bit, well it does cut straight on certain bits like that look, that's quite nice, but when you're a bit hesitant it cuts in bubbles. To tell you the honest truth it's a Land Rover, not a Lamborghini. So right, let's cut that round part. Now a little tip out, when you're cutting anything round your wrist will only go in that direction if you see what I mean, it's naturally round. It's very difficult to cut round like that if you see what I mean. So say for example it's quite difficult to go like oh, you know. it's quite difficult to go like that, but it's really easy to cut on a round like this. Right, so, that's a little tip. Now, I'm going to dress these edges up and then we'll mark out the hole. Right, <clears throat> it didn't do too bad. I think uh, I really should invest in some new tips for that machine because it's what happens with the plasma, because it's swirling air around and electrified air is swirling around, what it tends to do is for the first few cuts it goes nice and straight and then it tends to curl around so on sheet metal it'll go under the metal like it did in this instance and it doesn't burn nice and clean so but when you see when we install this you'll see it doesn't really matter because we're going to cover it with seam sealer anyway so you know again we're not making an outhouse for the Pope now now we can put our marks on here with our sharpie one Two, three, four, five, and six. There's our holes. All we've got to do now is centre punch them and drill them out. Now I'm going to do the rest with that one. I don't want to do it twice, it's a bit boring. So let's move those out of the way. And what we've got to do, most importantly, Top. So we get our when we bend, we know which way we're bending. We're bending this way. Now I have a sheet metal bender which I made many years ago. It's certainly paid for itself. But what you want, I'll show you a little technique how you can bend this stuff primitively but nicely in your own garage or front room. <laughs> As you know, in Land Rover Land, it's all about experiments. Well, he was a very interesting experiment that I didn't worked out for a long time, but it works perfectly. There's me holes in here, look. Right? This one's for the stay. Now, I've made it, you know, a little bit... I made them all the same because I couldn't be bothered to change the drill. But a couple of washes on there it won't matter too much. It's only a 6mm roll, but you could drive a bus through it. These holes here... Here. Are there for the square holes that go in the bottom that hold... I didn't get one out. Them in. Remember them? A lot of people put nuts and bolts in the floor. Don't do that because the next person who'd want to take the floor out pain in the ass. Revealing a square hole. How did you do it? Yeah, perfect size. It's a certain nail punch. You know, for when you're doing carpentry. <laughs> As if. Um, and it seems to be the right size. Let me show you. Let's put this on the vise. Where's it? I have to point to my finger because I can't see with this, this bloody uh, lens. It's too... Oh. Right, so, I want to make a hole in there. Now, obviously the orientation doesn't matter too much, but it'd be nice if they were in there. They were square, if you see what I mean. So, we'll lift that up a bit. Oh, 
one square hole. I did you like that? That was good, wasn't it? So, does it fit? Does it fit the little bits here? Great success. So, they're going to be fine. They're, they're, they've come out well. On this one here, I dressed it up a little bit, but I will do that one. But I was just showing you now that that'll, that will go in and it'll be a nice tight fit. So I'm going to continue doing that for all of them. And then I'll bend this, but I'm going to take this out now because it's scrap, but by God, it's got a good tight fit. I wish I, you know, I might just actually ask my machine shop, where the damn thing gone now? Oh well. I might ask me machine shop, knowing that was a great success, to make me a punch, like a little tiny, about, about oh, a couple of thousandths of an inch bigger, that would be perfect. But that's all I had, and that seems to work, but it'd be a nice little thing to have in the... Oh, there it is, look at it. Oh, the hell that rambling, I'm not going to edit this out, bugger it. So, it just wants a tiny, tiny bit bigger, but if I had a little round shaft as a guide, and a square, perfect. You could harden it, it would last you a lunch time. Right, let me get on with that. If you haven't got a lot of money and you want to make some nice square bends, just pick up a couple of bits of angle iron, like that look, and set it in your vise. And then you can then clamp your piece of metal on there on your bend line, and then fold it. Now, it won't, it'll fold a bit round, but you can always get a block of hardwood, this is softwood, and it'll just sort of tap it. And it'll be surprising with the results you get if you just do a little bit at a time. Well, obviously I'm not going to show you how to do that because I've got a, 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 a press, a break. Uh, I'm going to bend that, but that's, if you want to do little small bits, it's really handy. You know, that something that goes a little bit deeper than your vice. And what you could do if you want, which I'd suggest, you put a couple of bolts in, either end so you can nip it up tight so it doesn't you know it doesn't bend like that you know it's quite easy but you can make stuff that's a bit further out than your vice it's just a tip you don't have to use it I'm not forcing you <laughs> right let me go and bend those parts <clears throat> so here we go what did it look like when they're in not bad you know a little bit of wriggle room you've got the holes there they line up nice that's nice that's gonna fit Let's have a look at the other youth. There's a, bit of, uh, there's a bit of a plastic plug that sticks out there which should be it up a bit. But put all the holes lined up so that's good enough, close enough for farm work. So the next thing I'm going to do is cut those uh, foot welds out, clamp these up, attack them in, and then that's done. You know, well, weld them in properly. All right. A couple of things I didn't show you when I was before I bent. I made I cut a piece of paper out like this. Ignore the hole. That's that's nothing. But I put a piece of paper which was the right angle for the bottom. And I also, with a slitting disc, put a tiny notch just here and one here. And it's far better than a pencil mark or anything like that because you can see it. And sometimes you have to bend from the opposite way. So that was worked out nice. The next thing we're going to do is we've got to put a line of uh, holes in for spot welds. Get your sharpie, run it down like that. Look, you see, just run it with your finger. Just get a guideline. You don't want them too near the edge, but you don't want them right in the middle because you'll miss out where you're going to weld onto. Let's make some spot weld holes. got a series of holes in now. Here was my uh, Roper Whitney punch to punch the holes in. You can always drill them, it doesn't really matter. But you can see they're roughly along the line, that's why I draw a line because this, this thing here you can go in dip, different depths with it. I've lost the depth stuff, and it doesn't really matter. So the next thing is to cut out the foot wells. Now, you could do it with a, a grinder, a slitting disc, you know, like uh, one of those, you know, those really thin ones. That would work well. In fact, it would work actually better than the plasma. And um, in fact, that's what I might just do. Get your goggles on and cut that uh, old panel out. 
Well, <coughs> I cut this side with the with the uh, grinder, but it's not a very straight cut. I must admit. I don't know if you can see that, but it fits nice. The panel's nice. This side I cut with a plasma, but you had to cut it freehand at the back. Again, it would have been nice if I could have spun spun this upside down and cut it. It would have been a lot easier, but well, I see I'm running short space, but it fits like a glove. So, the next thing now is to weld it in. I'll show you a few tips on that too. What I'm going to use to hold the uh, panel down whilst I weld it is these little chaps. These are self drilling tech screws. Put them in with your impact gun, the man with the golden gun. Put them round and that will pull that panel nice and tight. And this is why we put spot weld holes in first, you see, because what you can do is you can do maybe every, every other one, every other two, until it looks all nice and even. And then weld up the holes and then take these out and then weld up those holes. Easy. Let me show you. So there you go. If you have a look around there, you can see how the panel is all nicely pulled down. Where are you now? You see the panel is all nicely pulled down so I can put all these spot welds in and then take those out, weld them up and then do the same on the other side. So there you go, that's them all spot welded in. They went lovely, all nice and flat. The only cause for concern I had was on this side and I accidentally went through some seam sealer and that's caused a little fireette which was not too much but it was smoky when it's smoky uh, you don't particularly get a good weld with your MIG gas if you see what I mean so the next thing dress them up with a grinder if possible if you don't doesn't matter because you're going to put seam sealer over them anyway but let's see what they look like when they're all dressed up and then we bash the two pieces of panel in together from underneath make a nice seam run it round with seam seal Bob's your uncle and Fanny's your hand. So almost last job. We're going to use uh, we use some. Uh, well, what the hell is that called? Seam sealer. Put it on the crack. Went round it with the corking gun. This is really old stuff, so it's not very good. So, got a little brush. I've cut it down, and then put a bit of thinners on the brush. Brush it across. And there you go, and then. That's going to stop that from uh, water coming through. Do that both sides, and then what we should do is spray, it, de degrease it, and spray it with stone chip. And then once it's primed and painted, it would look like a million dollars. But just remember to cut your brush down. That really helps. So I'm going to do that both sides, and then we'll have a look and see what it looks like finished. Right, with the uh, with the seam sealer now dry. What we're going to do now is put some, uh, what's it called then? Rocker panel cover. Yeah. Yeah, we've degreased this and this will put a nice finish on the inside, one hope. What a lovely job! See that? That would even put a smile on Greta Thunberg's face. That was about that. So I'm going to do the other side and then we're going to do this bit at the top tomorrow. I've cut down here and I've tweaked this piece of hinge out 
and I've opened this up and it's a bit of a mess so we'll do that to in another video hope you like that let's get this finished and uh, we'll see you in the next video